by far the most common real world aggressive act you're going to face are pushes and shoves. A lot of people ignore this because they don't consider it a real attack. The problem is if you don't defuse it early, you can end up with a, with a higher escalation. You can end up attacking you with different things because you didn't defuse the pushes and shoves. Let's look at some easy ways to practice this. All you need is a partner to push on him. When he hits you square in the chest, he's going to know he's successful. You're going to feel that your balance is broken. So it's an easy thing to practice. You don't need a lot of space. You don't need a lot of time. The first thing we want to do as a drill is get out of the natural inclination to want to stand up and square with the guy. So when he pushes on it, it's a lot harder to stop that. So we want to practice the idea that if I think he's going to start being aggressive, he starts pushing on me, I want to give him a shoulder or turn sideways. It doesn't always have to be that dramatic. As he pushes me, I can just angle a little bit. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then he goes on the other side. Get used to being able to angle. It's nice to get on the outside of the arm. If I have time and I see it coming, push hard. Sometimes it's going to make contact, but it's hard to push you off balance if it's sliding off. So a rotation of the shoulders and a step is all you need. He goes on this side, same thing. So if I'm standing here sideways with the guy, it already makes it more difficult. He's probably less likely to, to push you just because of the way you're standing. On the shoulders, sometimes I gotta go under it, depending how tall he was. It doesn't look particularly realistic with my partner here, but if you get a big tall guy, it's fairly easy to drop your shoulder underneath if he's pushing down like that. Same idea. Then we're gonna add the idea of elbow control. Remember, he can't get good force if he can't get that spring load behind there. So as he starts to push, I catch his arm, keep pushing. It's gonna slide up the web of my hand, and then I catch it here. It's important to end up locking just behind the, the elbow here. That gives you a good grip. And when he pushes back, your leverage is actually really good here. It's gonna take him at least a second or two to figure out that he can't, by force of his arm alone, push his arm back. By then, I can get behind him, go to a choke, whatever is appropriate to the force of level force. So as he starts to push, I get used to moving and pushing at the elbow. He pushes on my shoulder, I go underneath. He pushes with the other hand, I just practice that. Sometimes, maybe he makes contact and you have to move it off from the side. Certainly viable, but it's nice to get, like I said, on the outside of the arm. So this is for when the hands are more or less in contact with you. Again, if his hands are in contact with you, you want to take away the spring load. The hand position is the same. I want to slide him up his forearm and get just behind the elbow. As he pushes, I can straighten his arm up. It's basically my palms that are just pushing up on his elbow. You know, it's because it, it takes the bend away. The harder he pushes, the more I can drive his arms up. You know, I'm moving him around quite a bit because he's lighter than me. It's unlikely you're going to be able to do this with someone who's really, really heavy, but you will lock out his arms and be able to get offline. And if he pushes very hard, he may very well go for a ride. That's the position for against the chest. If he's maybe a shorter, stockier guy, and he's pushing more upward, and he's already got that spring load, I might want to push his elbows together. Okay, so when his arms are like, or, you know, he's pushing like this, I can already get his arms in. Maybe his arms are too bent. He's too strong for me to lock him out. I can push the arms in as he pushes in. Again, this changes the angle, and I can augment that by trying to change the angle of my chest. Again, if I hunch my shoulders, it gives him an easy target, I stay square with him. Mechanically, that's the worst position to be in. So it's a simple drill. He pushes on me, pushes on my shoulder, pushes with the other hand, and I just move the hands around. Again, push. There you go. So every once in a while, you've got to stop and make sure that your partner is actually pushing you. It's natural for people, when they're drilling, to start doing this to want to help you. So make sure the guy pushes it. Take one once in a while in the middle of the drill, then he does it again. Okay, pushes on the shoulder. There we go. I know that one's for real. Pushes on the shoulder. Okay, pushes on the chest. Okay, and then I can start adding my follow-ups if I think they're necessary to what we're doing. And if you have two guys who are both training this, we just go back and forth. I push him, he defends, he pushes me. And we just change the locations on the body and get, yeah, he's, I haven't even shown this, he's pretty good at it already. It's the shoulders. Center of the chest is always a bad one. Remember, if you get hit in the center of the chest, that's the hardest part to move around from, so it's really going to push you back. So that's a nice place to aim for. There you go. Sometimes you're going to have to move backwards, nothing wrong with that. But ideally, you want to move forwards. Why? Because it allows me to follow up. So he pushes on me again. I go here. If I get behind him, I can escape. I can attack a lot easier. If he catches me because I'm late, then of course I'm going to have to step back and maybe I can pull him past me, okay? 
And that's a simple drill you can do to get used to pushing and shoving, which technically isn't that difficult. It's just a reaction, a feeling thing that just needs the repetitions.